Hi, do you know what eddy current is? No, it's not some sort of ocean current that Nemo's father traveled to Australia with. Although the name comes from some swirling water currents. But I don't care about fluid dynamics. Eddy current is an electric current that's created in any conductor when there is changing magnetic fields around. And those currents make any conductor magnetic. What you have probably seen as an effect of eddy current is that throwing a magnet through a copper pipe slows the magnet down. This is paper though, I didn't bother buying a copper pipe just to add it to my collection of unused pipes here. I'm pretty sure it's easy to make one at home though. All I need is an aluminum foil, I wrap around my paper pipe and tape it. Now my magnet drops through air at this rate and through the pipe the exact same rate. Thanks for cheering me up. Well, I guess that's why we need to know how things work. And so, in an attempt to fill your brains, this video is sponsored by Audible. Because the more you read, the more you know. Except with Audible, you listen, you don't read. Which is even better, you don't need to sit down and read a pictureless boring book. Your hands are free, your eyes are free, so you can do your normal activity while being fed an entire book. Now that's efficiency. So go to audible.com slash electroboom or text electroboom to 500, 500 and get your 30 day free trial and listen to a book you like and you can be well read too. Well listened? Thanks to Audible with the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. What, why the hell is it not slowing my magnet? Let's see if we can figure it out. The whole thing can be explained by Faraday's law. You know, if we move a magnet close to any conductor, it creates electromotive force or voltage across the conductor. In simple terms, voltage or electromotive force is equal to the rate of magnetic flux change in time through the surface of a loop, which is also equal to the closed loop integral of electric fields over the same loop. So when I move a magnet over a metal plate and change the magnetic flux through it, I create current through any given loop, which is equal to the voltage divided by resistance of the metal plate in that loop. This is eddy current. The lower the resistance, the higher the current. It's all good and dandy, but why do I expect my magnet to slow down when it passes over a metal plate? It's due to something called the Lenz law. Basically what it says is that the world hates changing currents and magnetic fields. See, when a changing current creates changing magnetic fields around it, those fields generate a reverse current in the same wire that opposes their creator current and tries to stop it. It's kind of like when you push on a wall, it pushes you back. These changing fields can create a changing current in a second loop. That new current is such that it creates these fields that oppose the original fields and try to kill them. Everyone tries to kill their creator, it's just a hate-hate relationship. But the enemy of your enemy is your friend. If this current tries to kill those fields and those fields try to kill this current, then these two currents are friends. What those idiot opposing fields don't realize is that by reducing the overall fields, they are actually reducing this opposing current, which means more current runs into the main loop, pushing the amount of fields back up. This is how transformers transfer power from primary to secondary. Pulling current from the secondary output results in pulling more current from the input. Now, opposing fields repel each other because it means that they are coming from the same magnetic poles. You can see this by the jumping wire loop. See if I have a coil and I place a wire loop on top of it and then energize it with a changing current, the coil creates these changing fields through the wire loop that create this changing current that creates opposing fields that repel each other and the ring jumps up. So here we are, I place my loop on my coil and I run 10 amps through it. And the disappointment ensues. Just does a tiny wiggle. I think we need more current. Fine, I'll use my super capacitors to run 100 amps through it. Okay, the capacitors are charged to 20 volts and watch the ring. Ugh, my coil totally melted. 
I will not fail at this. See, connecting it to a DC voltage creates a very strong but very short pulse of magnetic field change. If instead I connect it to an AC source, it can provide a continuous push. I'm going to use my entire spool of wire as my coil and then I need an iron core to go through the coil. There, I'll use my wrench handle for that and then I'll just power it from 120 volt AC. Okay, here we are and here's a ring if you can see it and whoop. oh it did jump <laughs> hey but look at this it's dimming my entire home lights how much current is it drawing how much is it it's like 36 amps how come my breakers are not popping i literally have four breakers 10 amps in series let me switch to my longer spool maybe i can run it continuously Holy sh**! Look! My hundred feet of wire melted! I'll use the original spool of wire, which looks a bit shorter too, is it melted to some extent? <laughs> and an auto transformer to limit the current below 10 amps before I set the house on fire. Here we go. <laughs> there you are! The ring is floating because of the opposing magnetic field it creates. And if I change the voltage, it goes up and down. <laughs> I created a voltmeter that's drawing 10 amps. Okay, so eddy currents through a metal plate should work the same way too. They should create opposing fields that pushes the magnet back and slows it down. Of course, we are talking about non-ferromagnetic metals that the magnet doesn't stick to already. But then, why the hell is the magnet not slowing down? Hmm, I think I know why. See, the strength of opposing magnetic fields depends on the strength of eddy currents. An eddy current is equal to the induced voltage or electromotive force divided by resistance. The voltage is created by these moving fields and depends on their strength and how fast they move. I'm dropping a strong magnet very close to the foil. So the only remaining factor is the resistance of the foil. Aluminum has around double the copper resistance and it's pretty thin too. Okay then, to reduce the resistance I'll use the entire pack of aluminum foil. Yes! It's slowing down! Yeah! Here is the magnet through the thinner foil. Dang, just drops. And here is a similar magnet through a thicker one. Whee! And if I pick a bigger diameter magnet that gets even closer to the foil, whee! goes down even slower. Whee! Beautiful, whee! <laughs> so slow. I suppose it could work the other way around too, like a metal ring going down a magnet. Here's a loop of wire and an empty roll of paper. And if I put the wire around it, it just falls. But if I put a column of alternating magnets inside the paper and put the ring around it, you see it slows down because of the currents created in the wire. It's interesting, the smaller the resistance, the higher the eddy currents and the slower the magnet drops. I wonder what happens if the resistance was zero. Now I get it. Haven't you seen those superconductor videos where the superconductor is levitating or as they call it quantum locked above or below a magnet in space? This is exactly why a zero resistance superconductor is locked in position. Remember current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So if the resistance is zero, the voltage must be zero. Otherwise we would have infinite amount of current that would create infinite amount of magnetic force. From Faraday's law, zero volt or electromotive force means that d phi over dt must be zero, which means there cannot be any change of magnetic flux in a superconductor. That's why a superconductor can lock in space. When we bring it close to a magnet, we create huge amounts of eddy current through it that don't die away because there is no resistance. Those currents create fields that oppose any change in the fields of the source. Now in that position, the superconductor will not move away or towards the magnet. Because any motion that creates changing magnetic fields through the superconductor would create huge currents and fields that would oppose that motion. 
So the superconductor is stuck in space and can only move in directions where the fields remain unchanged with respect to the superconductor. So eddy currents can be pretty cool and useful, like in an induction cooker. The cooker radiates very fast changing and strong magnetic fields that create huge eddy currents through a metal plate. If you use a high resistance metal plate like iron as they use in some pots and pans, it generates a lot of heat. Wow, it's getting glowing hot here. But in a lot of cases, eddy current can be pretty bad. Ow! So eddy currents can create a lot of heat in iron cores like this one, transformer cores, motor cores, or basically any inductor. That's why instead of a one piece iron core, they use multiple layers of coated and isolated metal plate glued together. This prevents a huge eddy current to be created through the entire core and a lot of power is saved. Although I'm not sure if in this specific transformer they ruined it by welding all the layers together. Maybe some idiot thought it was a better way to hold the layers together. Because I haven't seen something like this in other transformers. Or maybe in fact this is by design and makes it work better. Let me know in the comments. And of course, Audible. If there is anything that can help me read more books, it's by not reading any thanks to Audible. You know, because ears. So sign up at audible.com slash electroboom or text electroboom to 500, 500 and claim your 30 day free trial and book. You will get smarter in no time and you don't even lose your eyesight because you don't read. You can cancel your membership anytime and get to keep all your audiobooks. And if you must know, I picked Nikola Tesla's autobiography and I'll rate it too, it's not rated. I like him, although I feel like autobiographies might often be biased. And then maybe afterwards I listen to some other important people's biographies and then I'll switch to what is a roti.